Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, the Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at the very first new moon, the very first chart read for the year of 2024, and it's happening on January 11th of 2024 in the sign of Capricorn. This is a psychic or intuitive reading, so while based in astrology, I do get psychic messages and downloads throughout the reading, and I do color outside the lines quite a bit from traditional astrology. Uh, if you think that it might interest you, stick around. Just a quick note, I will never message you for readings or anything else. If you want to access me or anything of my services, you've got to go to my website. Beware of imposters, which are rampant on YouTube. I also do like, spiritual art, and that is available on Instagram, and I would love it if you would subscribe. Okay, let's start off right away. Here we have this new moon in the sign of Capricorn at 20 degrees of Capricorn, right on my Mercury. It's in a wide orb conjunction here with the Pluto, but um, it is in the sign of Capricorn. It is a thing of building, of making things stronger, of making things better. Um, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn is the builder of the, the zodiac. It also can bring karmic things to the forefront. Um, it can bring karmic things to our attention, to the forefront. It's also making a big square with the nodes. We've got the 20 degrees of Capricorn squaring the north node and south node at 20 degrees of Libra and 20 degrees of Aries. So not only is Capricorn ruled by Saturn, bringing in that karmic element, but it's squaring up with the nodes of fate, which are also highly karmic. That's a lot of what Saturn and the nodes is a lot of what I base my... Um, soul readings on when I do the soul readings. So we're looking at these karmic turning points my guides just came through with. It's karmic turning points. It's a chance to build this new foundation, to clear these karmic debts, to let them go with peace in the sign of Libra. Let go in love, they're saying. Let go in love. To let go of the past with love and let go and move forward in peace. But move forward with determination using the two horned creatures of the goat and the ram, the Aries the ram, we're moving forward with determination and we're building something for the future. Many people around this time of year, you know, we're going into this new year and we're building this new year. It's also a, the last breath of this Pluto and Capricorn too. So it's, it's a time to also, you know, think about, come to terms with, come into balance with the Libra energy and come to terms with some of the things that have happened during the time frame that Pluto has been in Capricorn since the year of 2008. So what has, what karmic lessons have we learned during this time frame? What has been transformed and transmuted? Where have we experienced these great death and rebirth with incorporating the, the Pluto energy? Where has these big things, how have we been transformed over the past 15, 16 years while Pluto transited through um, with the sun and the moon through Capricorn, with the sun and the moon being there, you know, the sun is always shining. What can we glean from this? What is the positive feedback or the positive energy that we can pull out of this? Because it wasn't always all doom and gloom. And because it covered such a wide span of time, what were the things that were good about it? How have we shined? What has been eliminated in order for us to shine even brighter in the new year? What is being eliminated? so we can make this new beginning. This is the first new year, first new moon of the new year. So as far as astrology goes, you know, January 1st is really almost meaningless. It pretty much is meaningless, basically. So what, uh, this is the time to really set your intentions. What goal, a lot of things of Capricorn can be about goals and achievement. So what are the, th the goals and achievement that you set for yourself this time frame? This could be a time to really bring it into focus, bring it into being, bring it into uh, alignment with our soul's calling. The other big thing that's happening with this 20 degrees is it's making almost an exact trine to Uranus. So when we're talking about trines, we're talking about harmonious energy. Trine is where positive energies can flow. P trines is where we can move gracefully because the Libra energy also, we bring in that back and wants us to move gracefully wants us to um, move, walk in balance. 
Uh, the Uranus energy is unexpected and exciting things. I just heard uh, daring things. So this may be the time to try out that daring thing that you've been thinking about doing. I mean, if it's something in your first house, Natalie, maybe you want to try out this daring haircut or change your whole wardrobe or change your whole physical appearance or change your whole look. You know, if it's in your career houses and money houses, maybe you want to just change, you know, change your whole job, change your whole uh, profession, change your whole trajectory as far as that goes. Um, you know, maybe you want to come out of the spiritual closet as it may be, or out of whatever kind of closet you may have been in. You know, maybe you're you're ready to, you know, with the Aries energy, maybe you're you're ready to make a big declaration. It's like, listen, uh, this is what this is the direction. I, this is who I really am. Okay. Because the Pluto strips away all the extraneous bullshit and it leaves you with the raw essence of who you really are. And then you've got this new moon, the new year and the new moon. You've got this Aries energy of wanting to go blaze this new trail. You know, be that trailblazer and, and do this new thing in your life. So there is that energy of... Um, you know, blazing these new trails, really, you know, that's basically it. Blazing these new trails, forging ahead on these new timelines, for sure. Um, so Uranus, too, be aware of wild and crazy, not wild and crazy guys, although there might be a couple of wild and crazy guys. When I said that, I thought of, we are two wild and crazy guys. Wild and crazy coincidences um, that may, so-called coincidences, really synchronicities, right? These wild and crazy synchronicities that can sort of start aligning and lining things up, you know, from the gifts from the universe, you know, totally gifts from the universe. Uh, I was just going to pull out my notes here because practically everything, Mercury went direct on the first, and practically everything is, is uh, direct. Uranus is going to go direct. I can't find my note this minute. But, um, oh, here it is. My notes from the uh, January readings, yeah. Uranus is going to go direct on a, a little ways yet. It's, it's on the 20th end of this month, but and then everything's direct from now on uh, until May when Pluto goes direct, uh, retrograde. But right now, everything other, after Mercury goes direct on the very first of the year, okay, all the planets except for Uranus, which is the ruler here, is the only planet that is retrograde. So there's this big push, this big um, energetic blast of energy to really move things forward, to really, you know, there's not a lot of obstacles in our way at this time. Things are really blasting off, you know, blasting off into outer space is what they're showing me. Or like a rocket, or they're saying rocket fuel. What I'm seeing is somebody lighting off, you know, one of those old-timey, you know, one of these kind, like the, from the Coyote Red Roadrunner. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> and shoo, you know, just goes off into outer space. That's the way they're showing it to me. Or maybe it's Jeff Bezos' spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> right away I gotta go to the Austin Powers uh, movie or, or what's his name where they're all saying oh it's this it's this it's it's all these words for a, a penis um, and it was who was Dr. Dr. Evil was it Dr. Evil's <laughs> spaceship <laughs> what is it it's <laughs> but that's what the guys just showed me and it was red too like this big red rocket you know but something that you're launching around this time could, wow, just true, take off like that. Again, it's going to depend on what, which house it's going to fall in. You know, it, it could be a lot of things. Maybe it's a creative, it could, it could spark something in, because, you know, Taurus is very much ruled by Venus, very much creative energy. You know, it could be something that you're just excited about, and it just sparks some energy in your life. It doesn't necessarily have to do with otherworldly success. Not other, it's funny I said otherworldly success. Well, outer space, maybe it is otherworldly success. <laughs> But, um, you know, worldly success, although Capricorn can be that way in Taurus, too. But it could be uh, just in your own life, you know, just in your own life, your own uh, something really taking off, and you're just so, you know, happy, excited, you know, things just really moving forward in a, in a huge way for you, you know, just taking off like never before. Or maybe, for some of you, you're finally getting... Somebody out there, because Taurus is also like music and the arts. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. It's a squirrel on my neighbor's roof just staring right at me. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Just stay on the neighbor's roof. I don't need you crawling around on my roof. But anyways, um, 
what was I talking about? Oh, like, uh, taking off, like, like you really grasp it. Like, you really get a grasp of it. Like, if you're struggling to le learn, there's those, those learning curves. Or maybe it's a software or whatever. But, like, I remember, you know, anymore, I don't have to think about it when I play. You know, it's just like learning to drive a car and incarnating in a human body. You know, after a while, when you first learn, trying to learn to drive, it's really awkward. You know, you're trying to learn to walk, it's really awkward as you're a baby. But then, after a while, you don't think about it anymore. That, you know, so that's, or even just like a software, like... Photo, or even this one. I'm getting to where I can pretty much be fluid in this one, procreate. But it took me a minute, you know. But I also came from a background of graphic design. I, I already understood Illustrator, Photoshop, you know, InDesign. So it was just like finding out how to do it in this software, basically. But, you know, sometimes when you're just learning something, there's that clunky, awkward period, but then you get it. And then it's like, whew, then Then you can really use the tools as they were intended. Or... It, again, it doesn't have to be software. It doesn't have to be any, you know, anything like that. But really, what came to mind was musical instruments. You know, like I, when I sit down to play anymore, I don't have to think about it. You know, it just oh, he just dived off the roof. I don't know if I can get the squirrel over here. He dived off the roof and jumped on a wire, <laughs> like a whatever their cable going up to the second floor, their some kind of war phone line or something. And then he climbed up, on, he made this, this twirl. I mean, so we're talking about all this stuff. This could be a time of great leaps. I mean, and that's totally a Uranus thing. I just got to do a quick little illustration. So here he is on the neighbor's roof, right? And then this is the main building. He's like on the porch roof. So here's Mr. Fuzzy Squirrel, and he's sitting there looking at me. And he's looking around, looking around. There's a drain pipe. There's a couple other things going on here. And then way over here, like way over here, there's this wire going to their cable, whatever. And he just jumped. I didn't even see where he went. I just saw him, and I had to like go get a different angle. Like, where did he go? And there he is. He's crawling up this thing. So we could be doing these big leaps like that. This big leap. But it's going to require that courage, because that was brave. He could have, I thought he dived, jumped off the roof and landed on the ground. Like, there's nothing there. Where could he have possibly gone to? But he, he found another way. He found another way to get higher, to get to that higher plane, to get to that place that he's, he wanted to get to. He saw the opportunity, he saw that wire there, and he jumped out and he grabbed onto it. He grabbed onto that opportunity to die, go to that higher plane. And that could absolutely be what this Uranus is. Some kind of opportunity that's going to require a big leap. A big leap of faith or a big leap in another direction here. Uh, the other thing that's going on in these lower degrees here, we, we've got the Jupiter sextiling the Saturn. And wasn't it making some other aspects with something else real tight? Oh, the Mars, yeah. So we've got a tight orb trine here between Mars and Jupiter, and then Saturn's involved too. Saturn, by the way, being the ruler of this new moon. The new moon's in Capricorn. That means that the cap ruler of Capricorn, which is Saturn, is the ruler of this new moon. So Saturn's involved with the, is, is, is interacting with, um, with Mars and Jupiter. But the Mars-Jupiter, that's a exact, pretty much exact, five degrees. Five degrees uh, trying, so if you have planets at five degrees also, that would be, actually my Uranus is here, so especially like five Libra, or five Libra, five Virgo, that's where my Uranus is exactly. So this could be really cool for me too, but anything um, at five degrees. Jupiter and Mars is giving you that momentum. It's giving you that energy. It's giving you that drive, ambition. Especially Mars and Capricorn. I know it's not great because it's not a, a compatible, it's a square or whatever, but um, you can use that energy. You could always use that energy. It can also, you know, the downside is it could, Jupiter makes more of, expands, makes bigger, expounds on, you know, makes it grow. So it's making that Mars energy grow. I mean, just real blatantly, some people could just have a lot more sexual drive right now because that's one of the things of Mars. Uh, but also Mars, if if not dealt with through physical activity, whether it's sexual or, you know, exercise or I like to garden, dig in the dirt, it can become combustible. It can get, it can become anger. It can become this, uh, you know, impatience and things of this nature. Not usually in the sign of Capricorn. In the sign of Capricorn, it might be like kind of just short, just kind of like mean, short, like, un, you know, just like, oh, well, too bad for you, cold. 
you know, Capricorn, the Don, I'm a Capricorn Sun, so don't you don't have to blast me in the comments. But there's an upside and down to everything, and Capricorns can be cold. You know, they definitely can be cold. I know they're warm and soft inside, and it's just a front. I know we. I can hear you all right now. You don't have to make nasty comments, please. <laughs> but in this instance, the exasperation or the expansion or the amplification—that's the word I was trying to find. The Jupiter will amplify. Okay, so it's amplifying that Mars and Capricorn energy. It can be, you know, um, it can be, you know, coldness and not uncaringness or just self-centeredness. It can be like that, you know, just the bottom dollar. What's the bottom line? I don't care about anybody else, you know. But hopefully it wouldn't be. But just know, because it's still in the sign of Capricorn, even though out of orb, it's, you know, 15 degrees away, I wouldn't count that as a conjunction, really. Um, but that Capricorn energy, I mean, it's, it's, it's amplified right now, you know. We've got Pluto, Sun, Moon, Mars, and then the part of fortune there. So we can, part of fortune, we can, uh, we can work it out, but we can, uh, you know, use the energy in pos the most positive way to be fortunate upon ourselves, to gift ourselves in the most positive way. Uh, Saturn's involved too, the ruler of the chart, so Saturn, I mean, things launched now can really, with, I mean, with the Jupiter, not the Uranus, the Jupiter, it can really grow big, exponentially, the guides are saying. It can really amplify, you know, there could be amplified um, expressions like that rocket taking off, you know. Uh, I'm hearing sky rockets in flight, afternoon delight. <laughs> well, there could be some of that going on, too. The other thing is here, we've got this Venus exactly trining the north node and sextiling the south node in Sagittarius. Uh, well, not exactly. I was wrong on that. Exactly trining Chiron. And this North Node to some degree, but really with the Chiron is what I was trying to zero in on here. That's what they were showing me. Okay, so Chiron is that healing. Chiron is healing that self. Venus and Sag energy likes to keep it kind of loose and free. You know, uh, Sagittarius are famously the, the, um, the what you call it's of the Zodiac, the Bachelors of the Zodiac, they used to say. So, you know, the Bachelors of the Zodiac, they, they don't want to be tied down. They want to be free. They want to, again, they want to keep it light and free and everything. So there could be an element of that going on. Let's keep it light and free. Let's, let's focus on healing ourselves. Let's not look for, see, the Libra South Node of what we're releasing is let's not looking, look for that Savior. You know, let's not have the, find that, well, when I find that right partner, then I'll be okay. Well, you know, maybe that's really not the case, you know. That's probably not the case. That's probably, you know, you've got to... Uh, the one thing that Chiron and Aries is calling us all to do is heal ourselves. You know, go through and heal ourselves. Um, you know, this whole thing, this boundaries is, you know, a, a big uh, keyword or a buzzword that everybody's using these days. And, um, yeah, it's, you've got to set those boundaries because you need to replenish yourself, you know. And um, it's about looking after yourself so that you can be the warrior for whoever, you know, because Mars is that warrior energy. So you can be the warrior for that cause or that person or your family or your whatever, whatever you is important to you. Uh, not, again, not always needing the outsider's approval. Uh, but also, like, not letting others necessarily drag you down. Um, you know, Venus and Sag can handle things in a real cool way, you know. You wouldn't, Sagittarius, you don't usually get pissed if they don't like, like you say, hey, you want to go do this thing? And they're just like, yeah, and I don't know, maybe, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's not in a way like, oh, what a bitch, they, did, they didn't want to go, you know. It's just like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, they keep it light and friendly. And they, they have a way of, um, where others see that in them, this, this, it's like the fool energy in the tarot, you know. This light, friendly attitude that it's not like anybody would get pissed at them, like the coldness that, that Capricorn can exude at times, you know. It, it's not like, oh, man, they're so cold and they didn't want to go to this this party with me or whatever, the club or whatever. No, it's just like, okay, cool, catch you next time, you know. It, it's, it's this keeping it light, not being so bogged down by others' uh, agendas, problems, energy, and using that Venus energy to heal thyself. The other thing is with the Venus trine, uh, well, another thing is the outdoors. You know, Venus, uh, the Sagittarius energy, very much associated with the outdoors, sports, 
um, hiking in the woods, those kinds of things. But the Venus trying the, the uh, Chiron also is there's a great opportunity to heal these wounds through love and understanding of Venus, through our relationships, through maybe through creativity. I find creativity to be a great healer and a great solace to me in in so many things. You know, I always you know it's 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 like making time for it. Aries saying putting my I'm going to put my creative time first. It's not like, oh, if I, have end, if I have time at the end of the day, I might sit down and paint for an hour. No, I'm going to paint every day or every week or on these days for X amount of time, and I'm putting that first because it it's, helps me, and it's important to me. It's important to me that you know you are free. Yeah, Todd Rundgren. It's important to me that you know you are free. And, you know, and it goes both ways. It's it's not just like, I'm a selfish bitch and I'm going to do, do me and hell with you. It's like, yeah, you do the same. You know, live and let live. Rock on with your bad self, you know. It's like that. Yeah, so a lot of energy. Let me just do a quick double check on the ephemeris if there's anything big that I missed. We got the Jupiter Saturn stuff. We got the Venus trying the Jupiter. Oh, no. Mars trying Jupiter, excuse me. Yeah, Venus trying the node. Mercury trying Neptune. We didn't go into the Mercury trying Neptune. Yeah, and that's a pretty tight orb there, too. And the Mercury is in a pretty tight orb with that galactic center. So the galactic center, of course, is that portal. It's the center of our universe. It's where energy and downloads come through and from the outer realms and are accepted into this Earth plane. And Neptune definitely carries that quality as well. The Neptune is the subconscious mind, the spiritual side. Neptune is also big for the creativity, too, totally. So with this Neptune-Jupiter, it is a square, but again, taking into account that Uranian energy and all that other stuff that's happening, we could get these downloads. We could get these big downloads, these big aha moments, these big creative breakthroughs, for sure on that. Creative breakthroughs is going to be a big thing right now. And because um, it's at this higher degree, and then the Pluto's there too, you know, the, the Pluto's also sextiling the Neptune. We're at this, the end cycle of this, like the final solution. It, for some people, it could be something you've been toiling on and worrying about, not maybe not worrying about, but trying to have this breakthrough or this understanding or this, you're tr like, like I was talking about studying the instrument or whatever, the learning curve, you know. And then all of a sudden you can just, bam, get it in a way like, um, I just did this tutorial I posted. It's got a lot of views already. I got, uh, an, even crochet, I've been doing the crochet stuff lately too. I usually crochet every winter. I usually make blankets, but I've been, I got into these groups on Facebook with this crochet stuff and I'm, you know, making plush toys and, you know, I'm having fun with it. But if, I, if they say pattern and they send you, they give you this written pattern and it's stitch one, do this, blah, blah, blah. I, I mean, it's like stereo instructions. I just can't, it's really hard to comprehend. That's why I just love YouTube, you know. That was one of the first reasons I ever went on YouTube was tutorials. And I post my own tutorials. But I, I, I converted it into a tutorial just because I, I'm a visual learner. So maybe Mercury is something that's been like cryptic or not... Uh, you know, you're just not quite, you just can't get it. You could find a way with the Neptune to think about it in terms that you can understand. Like when I was doing that stupid, it's not stupid, but the Christmas tree pin thing that I did, it's like, do this, this, this language. You know, maybe those directions are great for somebody else, but I was not getting it. You know, I was just like, it was giving me a major headache trying to read it and trying to understand it, you know. And that's another thing with the internet and videos. I mean, my reading and comprehension, I'm noticing that. Two things I've noticed with computers. One thing, I've lost my ability to scan a page. You know, you used to scan a page looking for a word or something, because now you just press Control F, find, you know, or the, 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 you know, it's the find thing and look for it, the magnifying glass. Um, so I, my brain has lost that ability, but my brain is really not, you know, losing a lot of my reading comprehension as far as, like, that kind of stuff is really not... It's going down. I mean, maybe maybe I need to try to force myself to regain that skill, but why should I? Why should I when there's a video that's going to show me how to do it and make it so easier? And, and even if there's not a video, again, it could just be this breakthrough in your own mind. Oh, they mean pin bead pin. Okay, now I get it. You know, not a paragraph of 
gibberish that I can't understand that sounds like stereo instructions with no images, you know. Oh, okay, this is what they're... And once, it's easy once I put it in terms that, that makes sense to me. And that could be the thing here. If there's something that you've been trying, it's just like, oh, I tried to do that and it was just too complicated or hard, I'm just, screw it, I can't do it. Maybe try, go back to it. Maybe you're going to have that big breakthrough. And maybe it's not... I, I even remember that when I was taking HTML classes at uh, this local community college back in like 99, 98, 99 maybe. And this one teacher, nobody in the class understood. You know, she, she ended up getting sick or leaving or whatever. And this other teacher came in and everybody was just like, Oh, God, that's how you do it. Oh, okay. So, you know, one, the way one person understands a, a, something is not going to work for everybody. Even though the whole class was like, oh, okay, now we get it, after the, the good teacher came in and took over for her. But um, it's different for everybody, and that's what this whole thing can be about. Where you find, in your mental mind, you finally find a way to comprehend, understand, that is, makes sense to your style of communication, your style of learning, your style of whatever, you know. Or just a creative breakthrough, like, oh, man, I want this thing to look like this, but I don't know. You know, if you're even an inventor, you're trying to, or you're, you're trying to, uh, you're a code writer, you're trying to work on an app, or whatever thing that you had this Neptunian illusion about that it just weren't, it wasn't clear, you weren't getting it, bam, it could be crystal clear. And it's just like, oh, I get it now. I finally get it. All right, so overall, I think a very positive uh, new moon, definitely powerful. So if you get your affirm, if you haven't already done your affirmations on the solstice or at the at the new year, this would be the time. You know, get those affirmations ready. What are you wanting to manifest? What are you going to work towards with the, such a heavy Mars energy here? Be open to, uh, flexible with the Iranian energy to surprises, to alternative pathways being shown to you and illuminated through you that aren't, maybe some things you can't, sometimes with this Mercury Neptune, you might have to surrender more, let, let the mind go a little, and surrender to the, um, to the unconscious, you know, let that, let the universe, that, because you got the Uranus and the Neptune, let the universe work out the deeds, you know, work out the details, you just say what you want, and then, you know, start doing it, and let everything else kind of fall into place afterwards. Let the, you know, let the universe figure out all the fine print, because maybe you can't, you know, probably you're not going to, it's not, uh, the universe will have a better plan than you every time, I'll put, let's say that, every time, almost every time the universe is going to have. So why settle for something when you have access to this bigger consciousness? Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. My name is Vicki Verley. Um, one of the things I wanted to run by you, I just did my, I just had my solar return on December 26th, and every year I do my own solar return class because it's uh, awesome. <laughs> and I did my, uh, this is my solar return. I'm going to give you a slow roll of it uh, for, and it's, it obviously doesn't look like me. It's more of a soul portrait. And I'm thinking about it. You guys have to let me know in the comments. Um, I've, been, I've been dancing around this for a while. I've been doing this spiritual painting and stuff. And I've been thinking about offering uh, soul portraits for people. And how I would do it, it wouldn't be digital. I would actually, this is like a canvas board. So I would actually paint it on the canvas board and send it to you in the mail. You know, So you would have a physical object. You wouldn't have to go get it printed. You get the, the original artwork, right? Um, the soul portrait. So, I mean, I, it takes a good day to do it. It's not something I can whip out in an hour or, or something. It's, it's, it's a kind of involved process. Would you guys be interested in this? I mean, I'm going to have to charge accordingly. I'm thinking of charging maybe 222 uh, because it's, it's, a whole, it's pretty much a whole day to do one. It, it's, it's at least, you know, four or five, six hours, I would say, I put into this because there's many, many layers of stuff going on underneath here. Um, it wouldn't be the, exactly the same formula as the soul, uh, the uh, solar return thing that I do, but um, would you guys be interested in it? Uh, should I go ahead and set it up in the new year? It's one of the new things that I'm considering uh, setting up for the new year. You have to let me know. Would you be interested in, in it? If so, let me know in the comments. I mean, again, I, it's, it's a lot, so I would have to charge accordingly, so uh, there's that. The other thing is... If you enjoy and want to see the progress coming along on the Hamza deck, I've been posting some short videos as I go along of uh, that on my Instagram. So the Instagram channel is only art. 
It's only my spiritual art. There's no tarot readings or astrology readings or anything like that. It's just my spiritual art. So if you are interested in that and want to kind of watch along on the progress, then you can maybe follow me on Instagram. If that interests you, no pressure, whatever. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in today for the New Year's resolution, the New Year's new moon. I appreciate your your support so much, whether it's through liking, sharing, commenting. I do have a Patreon where I do weekly astrology and tarot for each sign. If you're interested in that, you can find all the links in the description below. Again, don't be fooled by imposters. Visiting my website is the only way to interact with me. I will never message you with some, you know, trying to get you to do a reading or whatever. That's all fake. Those are all imposters, and it's rampant, okay? So just be aware not only for my channel and my videos, but for other people as well. If somebody messages you, better off like going to their actual channel or actual website and finding out for sure if you're not dealing with an imposter because it's just crazy rampant right now. But anyways, thanks so much for tuning in today. Have the best uh, new moon and happy new year to everybody. We'll see you again soon. Bye.